Elephants are the largest land mammals on planet Earth and undoubtedly one of the most awe-inspiring creatures. Their size, unique shape, intelligence and strong family bonds have amazed and inspired humans throughout the beginning of time. In many religious beliefs and folklore, the elephant has become a symbolic figure, evident in countless historical paintings, carvings and drawings. Despite this, mankind in the latter centuries has nevertheless managed to commit countless atrocities against these gentle giants, all in the name of money and fueled by greed. Three adventurous women, Gabi from Germany, Kazir from Kenya and Casilla from Brazil, spent a day and a night getting to know the elephants of the Neisner Elephant Park, going on a morning elephant back ride, learning more from the caretakers of these amazing animals and even feeding a baby elephant. Join these three women as they discover the sad and mystical story of the Neisner elephants. Keine Ahnung, welches Tier mich am meisten begeistert und fasziniert. Schwer zu sagen. Aber müsste ich mich für eins entscheiden, ich glaube, dann wäre es der Elefant. Solch einem riesengroßen Tier nahe zu sein, ihm Auge in Auge zu begegnen, das muss der Wahnsinn sein. Und da träume ich schon sehr, sehr lange davon. Und deshalb freue ich mich auf diese tierische Begegnung hier im Neisner Elefantenpark in Südafrika. Dawn finds these elephants awake and they are led out of their secure sleeping area into the wide open spaces of the farm, sometimes to tourists who are waiting in anticipation for their elephant back rides, a once in a lifetime experience. You've got the last remaining elephants of the biggest gene pool in South Africa, the southernmost elephants in the world, uh, African elephants and that's, I'm talking about a natural herd. And, um, and then our effort, obviously, to, to keep elephants in this area by creating an elephant orphanage. So when you say orphans, elephants whose parents were killed? Or? Each elephant has got a different story. And um, these elephants play a massive role in, in education. We, we have a saying here called conservation through education. We started off in, in 1994 um, with two little elephants, Harry and Sally, who were tiny little guys. And it really started um, all because of the elephants in the Nasna forest, the fact that there was only one left. And what we wanted to do was get elephants in so that we could educate people about the past so that this whole indictment on man would not reoccur. The Neisner Elephant Park is a free-range, controlled environment situated near the town of Neisner on the southern coast of South Africa. Here, the elephant are free to walk and browse in the fields, as they would in the wild. However, they do need handlers and guides with them constantly, as they are actually living among and interacting with people. These elephants are never asked to perform tricks or behave in a manner that is not natural to them. They pretty much roam around wherever they want to go. If they want to drink water or go and eat or go and swim in the dam, they're allowed to do that. They're allowed to mate and have babies as they wish. So it's very, very special. Harry and Sally were the first two elephants to arrive at this park. They were quite young and came from the world-renowned Kruger National Park, where they had been part of a culling and translocation program. In 1994, the Kruger Park stopped the program and no more elephant came out of the park after that. When we 
we went and had a look at them. There were originally three of them. One had died of malnutrition. Sally was suffering from malnutrition as well. And um, it was basically from a guy who wanted to get in elephants and off the back of one of the big five, he wanted to shoot one of the big five. He was involved in cane lion hunting. So he thought that if he brought in hunters and put them onto an elephant and they could shoot a lion, he would make a couple of more thousand dollars, whatever it was. Um, <clears throat> and then what happened is little Willie died of malnutrition. Sally became very angry and quite aggressive. And um, she put him in hospital and he then decided that he wanted to sell the elephants. We went and had a look. We must have gone there three, four, five times before we managed to see them. And when we eventually got to see them, here were these two little guys. Harry took me at shoulder height and so did Sally. And I fell in love with them and at all costs, I wanted them. I never knew what the future held, not for them or for us, whether they would ever be free like they are today, whether there would be a whole lot of babies. We didn't have a clue, but um, it's all worked out incredibly well with Sally being the matriarch. And all the little babies and the females that we've brought in, she's adopted. Um, Harry is uh, like a big teddy bear. He's the most, he's really a gentle giant. Thank you so much, Arnold, for this lovely ride. You know, this guy is almost like a big leather sofa. <laughs> it's very comfortable. But the elephant is so, so humble and so emotional, yet so big and so mighty. It tells a lot about a creature. Her grace is amazing. This here is Tosha, and she's 22, like me. Das, was ich hier gerade mache, auf einem Elefanten reiten, das ist, glaube ich, das, was ich mir schon immer gewünscht habe, mir schon immer erträumt habe, seit ich denken kann. Und deshalb ganz herzlichen Dank an Sabili, dass er mit mir hier geritten ist. Natürlich herzlichen Dank an Harry. Das ist ein Elefantenbulle, 21 Jahre alt, viereinhalb Tonnen schwer. Hammer, absolut Hammer. Großartig, auf so einem fantastischen Tier zu reiten. Harry, Trunk up. Good. Muito obrigada pelo passeio, eu amei! Pessoal, espero que vocês tenham gostado, porque eu simplesmente estou sem palavras com a emoção que eu senti. Ah, yeah, yeah. Did you feel the skin? Yeah, yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah, it is. It's like really, really tough. Like, we passed by a uh, thorn bush, yeah. and it just went... And nothing happened, you yeah. know? But then when I... So so and, and, and Harry, he could talk. It was like if you say, Harry, talk to me. Good. Oh, is it? Ah, they, they I, I, received, English. I received gifts. Oh, you did? Yeah. What? Mai is so kind that yeah. when uh, we have visitors here, um, he likes to pick things on the floor and yeah. give to the visitor. Oh, and he nice. said, he said, ah, this is a gift for you. And I said, ah, really? <laughs> like, it was like a tissue <laughs> on the floor. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's, gift. it's for you. <laughs> he's, he's saying that he, he you are welcome. Oh, oh, oh the thank female. you. Was it a female you No, were? it was, it was a only a male. Yeah. Oh. It was a male. <laughs> oh, so he liked you, huh? <laughs> We use the elephants in the park to um, do a lot more than teach conservation. There's some amazing stories that we've got. Um, they, they, they're very broad in their nature, but for example, we, have, uh, we do a lot of work with uh, drug rehabilitation um, entities in, in the area. And it's, it's a, an amazing process because um, each elephant has a different story. It comes from a different place. It's, um, it's gone through a trauma of its own and in very, um, very, differing backgrounds, different, differing circumstances. 
And by introducing each elephant and their crisis and their story to the people that we're working with, they are able to use the elephant as a metaphor in their own lives. They are able to identify with some of the trauma of that particular elephant. And, um, and the biggest, um, the, the, the way we go about it is to describe how these elephants overcome their traumas, how they are able to problem solve, how they use their intelligence and their, their natural abilities to overcome the challenges that are in front of them in the hope that a lot of these other people um, uh, or the people that we're working with identify with that and use that as a, as a strength in their own lives. Yesterday we had a guy on one of the elephants who's a paraplegic. I mean, he is in a wheelchair permanently. We had a guide in front, him in the middle and another guide behind him. And there this man was on this elephant with the biggest smile. Despite its thickness, Elephant skin is very sensitive. An elephant has no sweat glands. Mud trapped in the folds of the skin along with the flapping of its ears help to keep the elephant cool. African elephants have the biggest ears in the world, measuring up to two meters from top to bottom. They do not have bigger ears for better hearing, however. Their ears are bigger because it is hotter on the open tropical plains and the ears are designed to diminish the heat. Inside the huge ear flap, is a network of large blood vessels. Flapping its ears regularly cools an elephant in several ways. Each flap acts like a fan, blowing air over the body surface, as well as cooling the air around the blood vessels in the ear, allowing cooler blood to circulate through the elephant's body. An elephant's tusks are not for decoration, but have a variety of important functions. The elephant used them as tools, as weapons, and in displays of strength. Although their tusks are useful, some elephants can and do live without them. And just as people are right or left-handed, so too are elephants left or right tusked. The tusk that is used more often is called the master tusk and is, as a result, shorter and more rounded. The intriguing trunk is made up of the nose, upper lip and muscles of the elephant's face, joined together and lengthened to form a unique fifth limb. The two nostril tubes are surrounded by more than 100,000 muscle units. An African elephant has two triangular fingers at the tip of the trunk, which it uses to pick up small objects. Most who have experienced it are surprised at how silently elephants move through the bush. This is possible because a built-in shock absorber made of fatty fibrous tissue cushions the impact of the foot on the ground. An elephant's weight rests on the tip of each toe and the fibrous cushion under the heel. Elephants are agile climbers of steep hills, mountains and on occasion even cliffs. Elephants communicate with each other through a very low frequency vocalization called infrasound which travels a distance of 20 to 30 kilometers. Elephants are herbivores and spend approximately three quarters of their time, day and night, eating. An adult elephant will eat between 100 to 200 kilograms of vegetation per day, depending on its size and its habitat. If you take that whole structure with elephants, you take the cow, the, the matriarch, take us, we've got our grand, our grandmothers up top there. And you, if she talks, you listen. I watched my mom listening to my grand, and there was no arguments. I watched my grand listening to my great grand. Myself and my daughter, there's that definite structure. And that's what elephants have got. The only thing is they've got it right. We haven't quite got it right yet. You take the bulls. When the, when the dominant bull goes to the water hole to go and drink, the other bulls don't go. He drinks first, he walks away, then the others go. That's the way it is. If only we can take some rules out of the jungle, I reckon we'd be a better human race. If an elephant becomes sick, herd members will bring it food and help support it as it stands. If it dies, they will try to revive it with food and water for a while. 
Once it is clear that an elephant is dead, the herd will become very quiet and will stay at the grave for days afterwards. If the elephant had a particularly close relationship with its deceased peer, it can show signs of depression. Even years later, elephant have been observed revisiting the site where one of their herd or family died. They will often remain here for days at a time, mourning the loss of that one. How do you feel about your mom or your grandmother? How would you feel if you lost a child? Elephants have exactly the same emotions. It is clear that elephants are capable of great emotion, including sadness, joy, love, jealousy, fury, grief, compassion, and distress. Okay, so we're just about to feed the baby um, elephant. So we're gonna prepare his bottle, then get the milk ready in it, and then we go and feed the baby. So, Felix, take us through it. Two teeth. Yeah. There we are. Yeah, there we are. That's it, yeah. More? This is a hole. Mm. So when you are pouring this milk, this milk into the bowl, make sure you have to close the hole because oh. you can get sprayed. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's close. Yeah. It's sprayed. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> For the teeth, putting in some teeth is a little bit difficult for you guys, but sure. yeah, sure, my, myself I do it like this, I hold it on one side and then I pull it like this. That's it. Oh, yeah. Well done. <laughs> well done, yeah. Well done. Yes. Here you go. Here you go. Can... Yeah, stand still. How's that for you? Um. Ich glaube, es ist eine unbeschreibliche Erfahrung, in so nah an einem Elefanten dran zu sein und sogar ein Elefantenbaby zu füttern. Unglaublich. African elephants once numbered millions across Africa. But tragically, by the mid-1980s, their populations had been devastated by poaching. The status of the species now varies greatly across the continent. Some populations remain in perpetual danger due to poaching for meat and the huge and deplorable international demand for ivory. I, I believe each person that comes in and, and understands and touches this animal and falls in love with it in turn want to go out there and keep the space for them, keep, keep them alive, not buy the ivory, um, not just agree to, I'll just buy that or I'll just go and do that or how about a leather belt. Uh, I don't want to be under, misunderstood because I believe that you've got to have a balance. If there's too many, they've got to be culled, but then culling is done in a very orthodox way, um, whereas poaching isn't. Um, and I don't believe that the wildlife should be exploited the way it is being. It's, elephants have taught me a huge amount in life. They've taught um, a lot of giving and compassion and um, that, that special bond that they have with each other is, is amazing. And I watch Sally, who's never had a baby, but every little baby that comes in, how she accepts that little one and nurtures it. And if that little thing performs or moans or one of the other ones push it over, she's there to protect it. Um, it's, I don't know, it's, it's just absolutely incredible working with them. You can't explain it until you do it. Come Sally, stop. Sally, 
Every day when we get up on this farm, we don't look at these elephants and say, oh, we're so lucky. We look at it as being an absolute privilege. It is, it is such a gift to be able to wake up and look out your bedroom window and there's Harry or there's Sally or walk out in your gown and you go and give them an apple. It's, it's amazing to think that these huge gentle giants can touch you in the way that they do. You know, these creatures are God's creation and, uh, um, it, and it's a wonderful way of bringing them close to nature. Through the elephant we can do so much, we can reach out to so many people and, and people in different circumstances. I mean, if you think about it, to be able to stand this close and to be able to hug her, and she's quite comfortable with it, it's, I don't know, I think it's amazing, it's just very special. Each elephant that I met here had a unique personality. I am convinced of the fact that God created them in this way, just as he created unique humans, each with a different character. I find it hard to understand why thousands of elephants are being killed every year, just because some people want ivory in their homes. This experience here with the elephants has enriched my life in a very special and emotional way. This world is full of distressed people with all kinds of problems. I'm so happy to see that these elephants, who also had problems, are helping people overcome difficulties in their lives. How can anyone, even for a moment, doubt that God created elephants? <laughs>